Become a supporter for my Patreon to get access to all my tutorial project files, including the one you're watching right now. Welcome back everyone to part 6 of the minigames tutorial series. Today we're going to be making two different minigames. We're going to be making a tile dash kind of minigame where players will have to avoid the tiles that are dropping and the players that are alive at the end of it get points. And we'll also be making a spleef game where the last player standing and has, that has not fallen into the lava will also receive points. So I'm first gonna make our tile dash minigame. So I'm gonna add a new module script into our minigames folder and I'm going to rename it into to tile dash. Rename this to tile dash and just return tile dash. And I'm also gonna make a game model for our minigame. So I'm gonna add a folder into workspace and I'm gonna call it game model. And then I'm gonna quickly build something for our game. So here is the finished game model. It's very simple. We just got four tiles, well, a four by four grid of tiles, a lava part, and a spawn and it's all under this game model folder with tiles being in its own folder and yeah pretty simple so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna move it into our tile dash mini game and now we can start scripting it so what we've coded right here is we get the game model and we also get tween service which is how we're gonna make the tiles move down and then we also have game time and a bunch of these other variables. Game time is how long the game lasts. The starting drop time is how long players have to run away from the tiles or how long it takes for them to drop down. And then this drop time decrease is what percentage they're going to decrease by. So 0.8 would be to 20% because we're going to times this by this. So 20% faster every time and then the tiles blink count is how much times they're gonna blink and change colors to warn people that the tiles are falling tiles to fall is how many tiles are falling so we got oh we moved it right here but we got 16 tiles so the um, six of these would drop so it would look something like this and the players it would drop and then players would have to avoid out of the way and that's only five tiles so yeah but you get the point now the tile warning color is the color that they change when it's warning players so we just did red and then this is the tween info so how they fall and all that you can change this if you would like and then we also have our tile dot run game function so when we actually run our game we just clone it we get the parent the, the new game dot parent and we set it to workspace and we also make the kill brick kill players when they touch it. And I accidentally put a parentheses at the end, but no parentheses right there. But that's that. And so we clone it, we set up the brick and all of that. And then we teleport players to our game. And we also have a countdown saying avoid the falling tiles in however long we set this countdown to be and then the game actually begins now we're gonna have to use coroutines to do this because we can't have the game counting down while trying to run stuff because it would the game would have to fully count down before we could run stuff or we run everything then count down the game so we have to do stuff at the same time by using coroutines so we create a coroutine for our main game and we call it game thread and then we all have our drop time which this was going to be the time that's changed during the game but we set it to our original drop time and then this is our main loop that's going to happen during the game so how our loop is going to work is the first thing we do is we choose the tiles so we make a tile we make a table called chosen tiles which is just empty and what we're going to do is we're going to do we're going to pick as many tiles as our tiles to fall variable says so this is going to run six times and we're going to pick a random tile inside of the the totals tiles table and we're going to get that get the index and then get it actually from the table 
Then we're gonna set the attribute of our tile to, we're gonna set the attribute of tile color to the tiles color. So if you wanna have like a checkered pattern or something like this, if you wanna like color your tiles slightly different on some places, the colors will be what they originally be when the colors are switching back and forth. And then we're gonna insert into our chosen tiles our tile and remove from our total tiles this tile index. So it's gonna remove our tile from the, the table and we won't be able to pick it twice. And now that we have chosen the tiles that are gonna fall, we need to make them blink so it warns players that, hey, I'm falling, and then they can move out of the way. So we make a for loop and we're gonna loop as many times as the tile blink count says we are gonna do. And we're just gonna wait our drop time then we're going to go through our chosen tiles and make them equal to our tile warning color. So it's going to be red. We're going to wait again and then send them back to their original color. So this is going to repeat. We're going to change the color, change it back, change the color, change it back. And we're going to do that however many times this says. And now that we have chosen the tiles, warned the players that they're falling, we now drop the tiles. We go through each of our chosen tiles, we make a tween, and we just give it our values, like the chosen tile that we want to make fall, the tween info, and we just set its position to 20 studs below what it already is at. We could even make this a variable, so we can just do drop distance and do 20 just to make it more changeable if you need the tiles to drop farther or if that's too much. And then we play it and we just wait our tile tween info time times two just to give a little bit of a little extra weight so we're not instantly doing this all over again. And then we decrease our drop time by our drop time decrease by timesing it by 0.8. So we've made our whole game thread right here, but it won't actually run until we use coroutine.resume. So we do that and we have our countdown go while this is running and this is the seconds remaining with our game time. And once this is all over, we close our coroutine. So anything in here will just stop and our game will end. And then we end our game with our basic ending and we destroy our game. So right before I test, I noticed that I did not put a wait in this countdown so just do test out wait one so it's counting down every second and we'll actually have a message saying avoid the fallen tiles in countdown without that I mean it's not the worst thing in the world but it's just we won't have a countdown like we wanted and I also made this part collidable so when people spawn they spawn on top of it I'm just gonna make that not collidable and I also renamed these the lava to kill brick and I renamed the spawn to spawn point because that's what I wrote in my script and it did not know these existed because I said spawn point in the script and spawn in the game so it didn't work but I fixed that and I'm gonna put this back into our tile dash module script I'm going to take this and I'm gonna take these these games and I'm gonna move them out of the way just for now and I'm gonna play our game I also set the min players to one so I don't have to have a local server to play just for testing purposes and yeah so we're in our game avoid the falling tiles in one second you can see that it starts blinking and it's pretty slow at the start you know no one's really gonna die from this it's just pretty easy and yeah we're just gonna let it increase it's slowly gonna get harder though you can see it's already increasing You could even increase the amount of tiles that do fall if you think it's too easy or make them faster. Oh, okay. And yeah, we're just kind of waiting. It is pretty easy, so increase it or decrease it as you'd like. But yeah, it's going to get pretty fast at the end. Oh, I, I blanked out there. Well, maybe it's not too easy for me. And yeah, that's about it for that minigame. But now let's go on to Spleef. We're going to do the same thing like we did with Tile Dash. We're going to add a new module script called Spleef. And I'm also going to move Tile Dash into Server Script Service just because I want this one to be the only one in here. But we're going to do the same thing. We're going to rename this to Spleef. And we're going to rename all this to Spleef. And we're also going to need a map for the game, so I'll do that too.
So here's our spleef game. It's pretty similar with the kill break and the spawn point. I did make the spawn point a big flat plane, and I'm also going to set its can collide to true. So players will be spawning on top of this, and they'll be looking down at the game, and then it'll say the game starting in like three seconds, and then this will get dis this will disappear, and they'll be playing the game. Kill break is the same, and I also have this folder called levels, and each level has these levels and then just these like column things just so I can group and make it easier but what I'm gonna do is we're gonna loop through this and every part in this which would be these is gonna be scripted so that's how that's gonna work and I'm gonna put this game model into our spleef mini game and now we can script it so we have a round time variable and we also get tween service for the tiles. We have our tweening animation styles that you can obviously change. And we also have our run game. So when we run our game, we just get game model and we put it to workspace. So we go through all of the descendants in our game model dot levels. And if it's not, if it's name, class name is not equal to part, then we continue because we don't want to be scripting a model and stuff like that. And when our tile is touched, we have a hit and we check to see if the attribute tweening is on it, which means it's probably been touched. That's just the, that's the name I gave it. And if that is true, then we return because it's already being animated. And if we have not found a humanoid inside of hit.parent, then we also return because we didn't hit a player. And after those, we set the attribute of tweening to true, so we can't hit it twice. And then we start the animation, and we use tween service create. We get the tile, and we give it the tween in animation info. And we set its position to have a stud below its normal C-frame. And I also change the size to just a little bit smaller than itself so it looks like it's shrinking a little bit and then we play this animation and we wait until it starts playing by waiting for the get property change signal playback state and once this changes then we know that it's playing or it's finished playing and then we destroy the tile so after we have scripted all of our tiles in our game model we also script the kill brick so it'll kill the players we teleport all the players to our spawn point C frame plus some studs above so they're not stuck in the part. And we have a countdown saying game starting in and our countdown. And so after this countdown's over, we destroy our spawn point so they'll all fall down and they'll all be playing the game. And we also switch the status value to last one alive wins. So now they know that they gotta be the last one to win. And we just wait and we wait while the number of players in the in-game folder is greater than one we just wait for them to be removed one by one and once there is finally one player in the game then we can do our basic ending so i'll test this out i'll i'll put this game into the mini games and there's no other mini game in there so we're good i'm also going to anchor things because i don't think i anchored anything let's just make sure they're anchored all right so i'm going to start the game and this one does require a local server so I'll just do a local server of two players and it's not going to last long because I won't be able to control both players at once but we'll see how long it goes for. So the game is starting and I won't be able to control player two that much but we'll just show you on this side before player two dies or player one but you can see that the tiles are being touched and they have the animation and it looks pretty nice and you can see that player one fell all the way down there and I'm the winner. And that's it for Spleef. Thank you so much for watching this video and huge shout out to all my Patreon members, UC, Kamadzi, Foxy, Jim Barry, NR, and Lewis. Thank you to all these people and thank you for watching.